Good evening. My name is Pastor Glenn Winston from Conway, Arkansas, 7310, Conway, Arkansas. Once again, it's Wednesday night uh, Bible study. Today is Veteran Day. We're going to say Happy Veteran Day to everybody out there. We're going to get into the Word of God and study the Word of God. Uh, we went uh, live outdoors in the parking lot Sunday. Sorry if it was a, uh, that's the first time out doing it. We learn from our mistakes. Next time the sound and everything will be better. Uh, everybody be on their toes of uh, you know what you need to do. But I hope you heard it. But today you hear back in the building. Um, you know, COVID-19 is still going up, you know. We just uh, have to keep doing what we're doing. Keep church going. Hope you keep listening and keep getting this word in you. Because you know what? The word of God is powerful. Sharp in any two-edged sword. And so the word of God, I've been saying is taking you somewhere. It may not be helping other people, but I'm telling you something. My relationship with God, uh, I can't, I mean, it, I got to have it. You know, the Bible says man can live by bread, but every word of the seed come out of the mouth of God. And everybody who loved God, they won't let no storm. You know, the Bible says can nothing separate us from the love of God. No famine, no storm, no death, no height, no nothing can separate us. And this time here, it should not allow nothing to separate you from God, to know him, to where you get your word from or constantly get it from. And, you know, uh, everybody, not everybody preaching, you know. Uh, some people can't follow, you know. They won't be leaders. They just can't follow, you know. You know, you put them in the backseat. They won't be backseat drivers. But if you're a person that that you, uh, uh, the word of God today, we're going to talk about high priest. We're going to talk about high priest. And we're going to talk about um, the priesthood of God give to preachers, to teach and to teach God people and do his will. Praise the Lord. Well, let's get into it. We're going to come from uh, Hebrews, the fifth chapter, starting in verse 1. It said, For every high priest is taken from amongst men, is the ordinance of men, ordained of men, and it pertaining to God, that he may be offered gifts and sacrifice for sin. Who, who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way? For that he himself also have compassion with confirmity. Glory be to God. That is talking about high priest. Well, high priest calling. You know. And so in this season, we have to make sure we stay focused. Get a word from God. Hear God. Stay connected. Get it. But you just take out your time to even from your busy world. Say, okay, I'm going to get on this phone. I'm going to get online. I'm going to get on my iPad. I'm going to hear this word. That is saying something. That's saying something that you trust the word of God and that you love God and you need him. And we all need him. God is still the same yesterday and the day forever. We need him. Amen. Let's pray. And let's get into this word. Father God, we just thank you. We praise you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this word. God, we thank you for this season. We thank you for everything that you're doing. We thank you for everyone that went to war, veteran, have fought in the army, that we can have safety for the day, that we can be here in America and um, be blessed by people that have made sacrifice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When I think of the veteran, veteran day, it, it ties back to Jesus. We'll see that today. It ties back to him. He was the greatest warriors, but we can have peace. That we can have confidence. That we can have a place knowing that there's a place better he's prepared for us. And he went and paid for our sin. Now, it's not like the end of the sermon, but I just had to put that in the beginning of the sermon because we got to understand why we study. He's the greatest warrior. Had ever been. And this is veteran that a man going to fight in uh, other countries and keep our country safe. Most dangerous thing is when we fight in our country ourselves to tear it up. And I, I'm going to get into the word about thinking about this. I said, Lord, I'm going to study the flag. I'm going to get the color of the flag and study. And you know, we see people, certain people carry the flag like the flag belongs to them. But the United States, we are made of immigrants. We are made, it belongs to all of us. And, and certain people think the flag only belongs to them. It don't. If we, we United States system, it belongs to us. But you can't cut half the flag and say this part is mine and the other part, it don't belong to you. Like the flag belongs to me. No, the flag belongs to all of us. And we look at what Pledge of Allegiance mean and different things and everything with the flag mean. We go to study, you'll be very shocked. You'll go start carrying the flag yourself and say, no, you don't only give you power because you carry it. Flag belongs to me. And that's what Jesus, we came out here, he began to let people know of the ignorance about 
about the priesthood and about him. So let's let's look at this. This is better than that. Glory be to God. And it says here, um, uh, in verse 3, and by reason, therefore, he altered also as for the people, so also his self are offered for sin. And no man take his honor unto himself, but he that is called of God was as was Aaron. Now God called Aaron when the people was complaining about Aaron. Was he chosen? When Moses they were building the tabernacle in the wilderness, when the children of Israel were let go uh, from Egypt after 400 years of bondage, Joseph said, look, God's going to visit you. Take my bones out of here with you. Don't even leave me here. After him and Pharaoh had been such good friends, but see, another Pharaoh had came on. They seen the children of Israel. Uh, the Hebrews was increasing. They thought, look, we don't put them in bondage. They're going to take us. Everybody, any time somebody see a group of people doing they won't put you in slavery because they're scared you're going to overtake them. They were scared that they was going to overtake them. But the Hebrew people want to overtake them because they're godly people. They just want to live and be at peace and do. But the Egyptians want to protect authority, what they had. And so they, so they put them in slavery. So when God come, got them, got them out, bought them out with a mighty hand, destroyed the federal army in the Red Sea, took them to the desert, Got them in the place. Now, they wanted golden calves and just everything else. So God began to tell them to make a, a tabernacle. And to go through badger skin and the color of the door. So many blue, red, purple, white. It, it brings on the color of, you break it down as Jesus. So, so they made this tabernacle. They were making this tabernacle often for, for, uh, for, uh, for priests where they, where, they, where they take the gift and everything in. So Moses, Aaron is, is Moses' brother, so they were going to make him preach. He said, oh, well, you're doing this because your brother. He said, no, okay, we're going to do it. Everybody's going to cut rod, and we're going to put it in the tabernacle. Which one bud almond, which, which one bud in the morning? Then, I mean, cut rod, he said, God chose me. Wish I had to be a miracle. Well, and they wrote, they wrote the names on the rod. Well, Aaron, uh, uh, rod budded almond with his name on it. So you know that God had chosen. You know, even... That was such a chosen so much amongst people to question. Uh, they put it in the covenant ark when he when he did the manner. They put the manna fell, Aaron rod, and the Ten Commandments was in the covenant ark. And wherever the covenant ark went, went they want. God's will was in there. God's purpose was in there. God's goodness was in there in the covenant ark. So here when God chose Aaron, he chose Aaron to be a high priest in his generation forever. So let's Continue. So, verse 3. Um, so also Christ glorified not himself to be made in high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son today, I have begotten thee. And as he said also to another in, in another place, Thou art a priest forever, after the order of Mel Milichet, in whom in the day of his flesh, when he had offered up a prayer and a supplication with a strong cry and tears unto him, that he was able to save him from death, and he was heard in that he feared. Though he was a son, but yet learned he obedient by the things that which he suffered. Now you heard me say that the other week about being anointed. Now talking about Jesus. Jesus is the high priest. Mel Milichet showed up, the first priest ever known, to show up when Abraham was going, when Lot, he had told Lot, you know, on back with Lot, they, Lot went with him, Lot with Abraham's nephew, God told him, say, do not take, uh, do not take uh, none of your family members with you. And he, and he took Lot with him. And when he, and when he took Lot with him, he was, uh, uh, Lot started prospering too. After they went through some storms, you know, they ended up going to Egypt, you know, and and uh, saying Pharaoh, saying Sarah wasn't his wife, and and got there, and Pharaoh taking Sarah in his house, and he and he started getting all these boils and getting sick, and he come find out that he was married. He said, "Look, man, take your wife, take everything I gave you," and that's when Hagar come in the picture, that uh, Egyptian maid that she had. She said, "He didn't take nothing from him. You take." It. Well, which ended up making an Ishmael with her. But that's another story. 
But then when they got settled down and everything started going good for them, then there I come, the cattle started growing, everything was growing. So Lot was the nephew of Abraham, so his cattle was growing, and his herdsmen, he had people working for him. And Abraham had the same thing. They fighting over pastures. Which herd eat this? Well, Abraham knows this one will work. God got a way of causing things to happen for separation to get you where you need to be. Because everybody don't supposed to be what God's going to do to be in your action. It has to be God. So what happened, Abraham said, look, we're going to have to separate. You look and see and choose any way you want. I'm going to let you choose first. Well, Lot looked up and seen Solomon. He seen the light. And he chose that way. And Abraham said, okay, that's fine. But don't get too close to that city. Well, you know that didn't work for him. Because he wanted the glamour and the light. Well, Abraham, God told Abraham, look, he looked out in the plains, out with no lights at. He said, Father, I can see I'm giving it to you. It's yours. I'm going to bless you. Well, Abraham had his. So him and Lot were separate, separate ways. Because God had to deal with Abraham personally. Because this thing was personal with Abraham and God. So it say nobody helped him. So God deal with him. But Lot, what happened? He went close, and when another king comes inside to take that city, he took Lot and his family. And when Abraham heard it, Abraham got his people together and he, and he get wisdom and make sound like it was more than it was. You know, they come with a plan and they raided them and they got back the people from Solomon. They got Lot back and everything. Well, the king from Solomon, when he was coming back, he said, uh, uh. Give me the peoples or something going on. Get it. Give me an idea. This Abraham said, "Look, I want nothing. I want no man say make me rich." He said, "Look, these people are free. They do whatever they want to do." But but what he did, he was saying, "You can have whatever you want to have." But that was a. Uh, but Abraham no God was his God. Okay. So what happened? God Himself, Mel Miller's check, showed up out of nowhere, and he gave the tithe and offering to spoil unto him. And gave glory to God for letting him win with lesser people from this king. And he got his nephew back. He got everybody back. So when Abraham went and did, he did a priest move. He didn't go to war for himself. He was going to release his family to help them. Mel Melichek showed up from that point. And from there, uh, we go often unto God, often unto priests, often unto priests. But that was God himself showed up as a priest. And that's why I said he in the order after Mel Milichek. And this was talking about Jesus Christ. He was talking about Aaron. And from that point, that was something to give back to God. Say, we thank you for what happened. We thank you for what you did. And that's the reason why a priest showed up. Let's finish this. And so, uh, verse 8. Though he was a son, yet learning obedience by the things which he suffered. Now, I said the other day, you cannot... Be anointed without going through something. Without going through something. And you got to. Abraham went wherever God told him to get. It was famine. He had to go down to Egypt because of famine. And, and, and had to lie about his wife or his sister. And just everything. He was determined by God to get where God wanted him to go to. And God was with him. But God told him, said, but he told Pharaoh, he said, what do you do? He said, well, the Lord did tell me who's going to be good to me, he's going to be good to them. Who uh, who uh, did me wrong, you know, he would do wrong to them. So when you got a promise in your life, you got to be careful about people around you because you're going to end up getting them blessed or you're going to get them cursed. Because when they treat you right, they're going to prosper. Don't get mad at them because they're going to prosper. When they do you wrong, you're going to see them go down. Because why? When you got an Abraham calling on you, and if you don't know what you got, people around you start, start prospering. People around you start getting cursed, one or two. Because if they're your enemy, they start getting cursed. But if but if they are recognized and be a blessing to you, they're going to multiply. Because God told Abraham, who bless you, I'll bless you. Or curse you, I'll curse them. Whatever done to you, whatever person do to you, I'm going to do it back to them. Because you, you got an anointing on your life. You're mine. So that's the reason why that when Pharaoh called him, he said, well, he, Pharaoh was getting sick because he had his wife. He said, well, the Lord did tell me. He said, whoever bless me, he'll bless them. Whoever curse me, he'll curse them. He said, man, get everything up out of here. So that was proof that Abraham never had to lie about his wife was his sister because she was a beautiful woman. And he knew that they would take, they would, he felt like they would kill him 
to take his wife. So he said, now you just say you're my sister. Well, they taking him right on, taking her right on in there. He gave Abraham an offering for her, for her and had her in his house. He started getting sick and everything. And he come to find out, see them together to come find out they was married. He said, why are you lying to me? Did you just curse me? So take everything. I don't want nothing back. So another thing, Abraham had to realize that God was with him. He had a special anointing on his life. You get connected to him, you get blessed. You curse him, you get cursed. So he had to tell Pharaoh that. So that's anointing on, on, on people that are connected to God. If, if, if you get around them, you get blessed. Well, you're like, wow, I'm wrong this person, I'm just getting blessed. Well, I, I, you start doing it wrong, man, I'm just going, well, because of the connection of the promise of Abraham, the blessing. So Abraham gave an offering to Mel Miller check. And so you understand, Jesus Christ learned things through, verse 8, I'm going to read it again. Though he was a son, but yet learned he obedience by the thing which he suffered. So whatever he suffered, he learned obedience. And he learned that everything ain't going to go my way, but still got anointing on my life. So, so Abraham, so Jesus learned obedience by suffering, doing what God said he do. And it, ain't, it don't work that way. You come in, oh man, I just everything go my way. It don't. You're going you gonna to have to go through to get some anointing. You're going to have to, God will check you at the door. He said, if you with me, well, this is going to go down. It's not the way you want it to be. Doesn't Jeremiah want to be put in prison, saying things against the people? The people didn't like him, but the end he did. You, you think uh, uh, Jeremiah, uh, Daniel, Ezekiel, all the anointed, Elijah, everybody, it was the outcast people. John the Baptist, outcast people. Why? Because they suffer things. Why? Because with God, if Jesus Bible say, if if he suffered, we'll suffer. Not in that frame. But it says in John the 16, chosen of. He said, we know better than our Lord, better than our master. People are not going to like us because if they got the devil in them, they're not going to like you. But here it go. Jesus learned obedience through suffering. He learned, he was anointed by obedience. He didn't get there by not being obeying and be anointed. So how can you tell the angel to go and heal somebody if you disobedient? How can you go and say, I'm going to call this and it's going to show up and you disobedient? No, it don't work that way. I will do your suffering and obedience give you anointing. Watch this. Watch this. He said in verse 9, and being made perfect, he became the author of eternity salvation unto all men that it may obey him. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to read eight again so you will understand. Though through he was a son, but yet learned obedience by the things which he suffered, and being made perfect, and become the author of eternity salvation unto all men that obey him. And God, him the call of God, a high priest, after the order of Mel Milichek, which is after God. He's, he's second in command. Jesus is second in command. God is the number one priest. Jesus is second. And so many people, when I was reading it, God was saying, I want to talk to some people out there. There's so many people out there want God to do something for them, put them in a position to be there. But God said, you know why it never happened? Because you never could serve. You got to learn to serve, serve somebody else before somebody serve you. And that's the problem with people. Well, I ain't going to serve them. I'm better than this. Got to do this. No, you, you, don't, you don't understand God's way. You always got to serve. I remember when I probably was starting ministry, I had to go and help another minister. I served. I served, 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 served. We served. People with me at eight, seven, eight guys with me. They want some of them start talking, man, why are you serving this guy like this? Because God told me to. But then I went thinking one day, after I did all that went through, now God said, go and start me a ministry. And then guess what? People came and they honored me. But I had already honored somebody else first without murmuring and complaining. So to be anointed, some people say, well, I want to come to have my own church. Well, if you can't serve nobody that got a church, how do you expect God going to give you a church? Because what you sow, you reap. God don't break his principles, sowing and reaping. And so that's the thing, learning of being obedient. You have to learn to be obedient. So here, he learned to the, to the things of what he went through, being obedient. So a lot of times, he said, well, I ain't going to do that. I ain't going to do that. Well, God told you to do it. 
That's what the Bible says in Ephesians 6 tells you to do. He's telling you. That's why he tells you to put on the whole arm of God so you can do it. Because it goes through and it tells you everything about children, about uh, fathers. It tells you about imposition, in your position. It tells about people working for other people. Don't be man pleasers, eye pleasers. He said, do it unto the Lord. Give people over somebody. He said, listen, you're accountable. You owe somebody. You've got to give them accountable for it because there's no respect for person. They say, fine, my brother, put on the whole arm of God. You got to put on the whole arm of God to be able to stand the wildness in the evil day. He, he let you know that we don't wrestle against flesh, but for Christ Christ, we're in our places. So to do what you're supposed to do, the enemy going to get you off because he don't want you to walk in the will of God. And you thinking being obedient, doing just a simple job in the will of God? Yes, it is. You don't see that's what you pass up. You don't want the armor on to do simple tasks. Because you think that task is done. But that task brings you to a very valuable place. Because God always, Jesus had to learn obedience before he ever get to the place he had to get to. And that's the way it works. Now watch this here. In verse 11. For whom we have many things to say. And it's hard to be uttered. Sin, ye are dumb of hearing. In other words, he said, it's many things I want to tell you, but you don't understand what I just said. By the simple task of being obedient. Simple task. What was that problem me being simple task obedient? No. That's what God said. Put on the whole arm of God. And then after that, he tell you to do that. And after you do with the sword stuff, he said, if you don't forgive them or they trespass, I'm not going to forgive you yours. See, this whole thing of being obedient, to carry out what you need to do, you got to be anointed. Because the devil going to fight you not to carry it out. Because you think it's nothing. But God knows it's something. Because through obedience, well, you get your anointing at. Verse 12. For when for, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, yet you need that one teach you again, which is the first principles and the orders of God. And you'll become such having needed a milk and not a strong meat. So in other words, he said, instead of you knowing about, he told Peter, he said, Peter, if I can't wash your feet, you can't be a part of me. Peter said, I'll wash everything. Because why? Because it's a principle of being obedient to carry out God's will. You look things that you think is nothing, is it something? Because it said that the priest had compassion on people's ignorance. Don't matter. Oh, well, they don't know not anything about them. No, you put that compassion of they sin. They didn't know no better. But once they come know, then they count the bills. You got to teach them. You was receiving the gift of God's gift when you're a preacher. And if you get people bless you or get a gift, or you're supposed to pray for people. You're supposed to make that offering unto God for them and saying, God, they come. They trust me in you. I'm between you and Jesus. And Jesus is between me and you. So I, in the name of Jesus, Jesus told me I can pray for this person. I can speak in their life for this person. I can do the will for them. And that's the order. You don't break it. It don't matter if somebody goes, well, he ain't blessed. He don't know big church. He ain't got no money. He ain't got what I got. That don't mean a thing. If you got Jesus, you got everything. Because always a suffering time come before a glorified time come. And so in other words, Need to be teaching, need to be taught again. You got to be humble. You got to know to go through. You got to not look like I got to have that. Long as you do what God say do, out of obedience, and Jesus learned to be obedient to God through the things He suffered. And sometimes we got to go when it don't look like it. We got to be obedient to the things that we suffer and understand that what God wants out of us matter. If Job said it, should not receive bad and good from the Lord. But God is still good, whatever. Now, I'm not saying God's a bad guy. Personally, no, I'm just telling you how, to, how it works. And God said, your thoughts not my thoughts. Your ways not my ways. Hide in heaven and earth. I do it backwards. You don't, you don't understand it. Watch this. He said, I'm going to read it again. Verse 12. For when, for when the time that ye ought to be teachers, ye have, have a need that one teach you again which infers the principles and the articles of God and are come such that have needed of milk and not a strong meat. For everyone that, that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness 
and he is for he is is able for but the strong meat belong to them that are full age even those whom by reason of using and having their senses exercise to discern both good and evil. In other words, we have to learn the, the, the principles all to God with good and evil. What do God want out of me? Is this right? Is wrong? Is I'm being mean this person? Is this cause this person sin? And this person come? I'm in the position. I'm supposed to pray for this person regardless. You know, I made an example once. I had to go and pray for uh, this young man. Uh, no, I'm not all that. I'm a sinner saver, right? But I'm just trying to teach you and show you. Uh, uh, you cannot get, when your job is your job, no matter what nobody done, they come to add one repent. Hey, I want you to pray for me. I want you to do this. I, I had a nephew that recently died. He, he, come, he called me and said, oh, I got something I want to come give you. And, uh, and he said, I want you to pray for me. So I said, okay. I said, you can give it to me. Come to me. He can. And I, and I prayed. And I was speaking. And his word had been speaking in Wednesday night saying, God is God. You can't do it. He's God. And, we was, and he was tears again come out of his eyes. And I prayed for him. I prayed for him. If you want me to speak, I prayed. I prayed. Prayed for him. Spoke in his life. Prayed for him. You want me to pray for him? I did it. And then it was, it was on a Friday. And then it was a Saturday night. I was finishing up in my business. He called me. He said, Uncle, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna talk to you. I'm in the hospital. The next day he went to the hospital. And then we didn't get a chance to finish the conversation. Then the next morning I had to come and do the service. And I was sitting in my kitchen. I realized, wait a minute, we didn't get a chance to talk. So I come down and finish the service. Now, but regardless of we had prayed that Friday. And then before I can get out of the church building, my sister comes and said, Well, you know, uh, you're my nephew. He said, name Raw. He said, he's in a coma. I said, oh my God. And so, and from there, up there, there, he ended up dying. But he come, and, and he wanted to make sure he wanted prayer. He wanted prayer from God. He wanted prayer. And guess what? He came. I did my job. We may not finish the conversation, but I did my job praying for him. I did what, what he wanted. So I probably the last one in the family. Really, maybe, unless he's seen somebody, had contact, but we had contact with Jesus. And guess what? I'm, I'm fully persuaded because through the lifestyle that God had me to set in front of him, because he was my usher once in the church and stuff, to set in front of him. And he's seen how fully that I went to God and trusted God. So that's the same God. He's been raised up. He knows the trust. So in his last day, term of time, he came, he came to God and said, look, I'm on prayer. He got himself right with God. And even though his exit, he was fit to exit out of here. I did my job. He come to a priest. We did what we supposed to do. Did we lose? No, we won. Because one day I see him in heaven. Come on, be to God. And I thank him all the time, thinking in my smile, like he's saying, thank, um, thank you. And so, you know what? I'm just excited about that. It doesn't matter what the suffering go through. Because the end will stop you from preaching, stop you from doing stuff like that, to get your family in to what it needs to be. It's worth all the suffering that you go through. You just can't never give up. Because God told you to minister. It's not about you and things. It about, it's about you doing the will of God and, and, and discerning both good and evil and begin to speak in people's life and tell them that God is good. God is able to do whatever. A lot of people sometimes call that losing. We call that winning in my family. If you give your life to God and you die, we win because we know we are, we, we, we stock and stop <laughs> another place is better than here because we we looking morning morning for a new earth and a new new place and a new heaven. This heaven, if, if this heaven over this earth is over to put, to give us what we need on this earth while we going through this earth, and the fabric of this earth is got hurt and pain and sin from Adam and Eve in, but the next heaven. It's over us. My God, totally different. We don't die no more. We don't sin no more. We don't suffer war no more. It don't happen like that no more. Different place. So this is not it. We're going to a better place. So when the priest showed up, we have to understand both good and evil. We don't look, get nothing for our self-gain. The priest came 
taking the offering, held it up to God, offered it to God for the people for their sin and their gifts and began to pray for them and began to pray with them with compassion. And he said, you don't pump yourself up because you're a priest. If God chosen you, you'll be like Aaron. I know I'm chosen of God. I got a job to do. And that's my job to do. Go be to God. Woo, thank you so much for tuning in today. I can go on and on. Hate to really cut it off. But it's veteran day. Jesus Christ is the greatest veteran that it's ever been. And if I'm going to wave the cross up, or some people carry that flag like it belongs to them, I have to tell them it belongs to me too. I'm a U.S. citizen. So I understand they taking that flag and trying to make it only belong to them. That devil's a liar. That flag belongs to me too. Glory be to God. And nobody's going to take it from me. It's what Jesus Christ said. Somebody come tell me, you're no good, you're that. No, I received Jesus Christ. I confessed him. I still love him. Guess what? The sin is always, God always forgiven us of our sin. We just have to, we have to not tell us we sin willingly. But if you do, you always got repentance. The Bible says a just man falls a seventh time, he get back up again. But the wicked man, he stays and wallet in it. See, but when you know that you are in an imperfect world, and the devil will come at you. You need priests in your life to speak in your life. Pray. Speak to you. But he come to make us all kings and priests. That we come to know the word for ourselves. But he said to be teachers. We be taught again the principles in the articles of God. That we may know them. And the people that are unskilled that. Don't believe God can forgive somebody and love somebody. Or they just don't forgive nobody and hatred in their heart. Man, come on. He said, no, you need to go back. You need, you need to be told again for God, mercy and grace. Then he goes back and says, but them who the strong belong to is what they can suffer and they still love God. Things can go your way with God. You still love God. God wants you to serve somebody. Still want God. Just look at, look at, look at Caleb. Caleb said, look, we can go and take it. Let's go and get it. Him and Joshua said, they had different spirit. But when the time came, he said, well, okay, you're going to help everybody else get their stuff. But when Caleb got down, he helped everybody. He said, look, I'm 80 year old. I still want my mountain. He still wanted. He said, I'm, whoever up there, we're going to kick them off of it because it's mine. And I'm going to get it. I've helped everybody else. You got to discern both good and evil. You can't be a selfish person. You can't think on yourself. You got to know that God put you in the place. You're going to suffer. But then it's always about you. It's about for other people. You keep being there for them and being between where you can pray for them and you can tell them no matter what they've been through, God still love them. Glory be to God. I thank you today for being here with me. Happy veteran day. Jesus Christ is the greatest veteran you'll ever, ever see. Greatest warrior you'll ever see. He's my man. He's my big brother. He's my Lord and Savior. I love him. My mama called him sweet Jesus. You can bet your life on that one. Jesus Christ. I want to know today, have you have made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? Have you received him? Has Jesus been flailing around your heart trying to get you to come in? Is trying to get you to come on? The Bible says he's standing knocking at the door. If you hear him, anybody open the door, he will come in. But if, you, if he is, praise the Lord. It's a blessing. That is an opportunity. I thank God when he showed up. I didn't show myself up. The Bible tells me in John, John uh, 15, verse 16, he said, you didn't choose me, I chose you. And ordained you that you can go forth and bring forth fruit. He said that. And he said, if the world don't like you, they didn't like me. You know, greater than your Lord, your master. He let us know this thing. Thing I want to say to you. If Jesus is pulling on you, that's a blessing. Just let him have you and receive him. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, says, if you confess your mouth and believe in your heart, that Jesus Christ was son of God and raised from the dead, they believe in your heart. He said, you are saved. And right there, the spot of confession of the word of God. And you say, I believe. I believe. I mean, I should be a religion demon. Some people got to prove something to other people. I ain't got to prove nothing to nobody. If God tell me to operate in my gift, I will. If God tell me to do it, I, I will. But I, I don't I don't go out there to say, look at me. You don't he say you don't you don't glow. You don't he said you don't glorify yourself. You stay humble. And if somebody wants to know Jesus, you don't push him down their throat. I want to make Jesus look good. I want the people they find out. I want that one with that guy got. <laughs> you know, I want to carry him well. That's a, that's a song say, he looked good on me and carried him well. 
I want to carry where I want to push people away from Jesus. I want to bring them to Jesus. I tell people, say, look, you see me, Paul? Look, God works real good. I'm human. I ain't got nothing against Jesus. You keep on marching with that word of God. Take it on to where it's supposed to go. I pray that I don't. But we got no heaven. We don't have to put nobody in. We only work for God. And we should work him well and love him and present him well. And he said, you need to be taught the principles of the again. You can know the Bible back and forth all you want. And if you ain't got no compassion on nobody, you be a little milk person. But the one that has a strong meat, and only God can love, love to the depth of the worst that ever been, and love up to the highest, then you understand that you, you got strong meat. You know God is able. And you don't limit nobody because God never has limited nobody. So today, I'm saying, you receive it. I welcome you in. Glory to God. Let's pray. Can I pray? I want to pray for the congregation of Knowing Point and all my listeners out there, you're still listening. This is a trying time. You have to, you have to stick with it. You have to be focused. You have to, and you know when people are saved, you know how to twist their arm. It's common because it's something that they love. It's some natural muscle they do. They don't do no faking. You know, some people want to be back in church so they can put on shows. You know, they don't be back in church so they can just put on shows. Because if they can't get in church, they can't put on no show. But hey, I, I mean, now listen, I'm a priest. Don't get me wrong. I love having church back. But it's individual now. Your relationship is individual. If you ain't thought about God or you come uh, uh, staying connected, well, you just want to put on show. You want to just put on a show. People want position in church and put on show. Her Bishop Jay said, well, this, this, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this disease we got going, he said, what well, it happened to affect some of the black community. He said, the only time they felt important was when they went to prune. Why? Because go to prune and put on shows. Everybody get that down. You go to church and get a chance to tell a funny joke or get a chance to sing a song or, or get a chance to do something or put on some new clothes or go around and be feel important. Now you go to prune now. Hey, all that crying ain't going on. They get in and get out. God has made it where it's real now. It's all the actors that got to get out of the way. Take me to the king. All the actors off the stage. Let's get it. So in other words, now it is real. If you love God, you're still hanging on loving God. And just because you're in the building, but you're still loving God, you're good. Because you're the building. And, and if you're still connected to the word and still getting it where you can, and plus you in your relationship, you're good. Because you die, no building go with you. You die, no choir go with you. A lot of people want to fake and be seen. Right now, I don't care if I'm not seen. By man, as long as I'm seeing my God, that I love him and still got that word. He come for his word. Come for his word. So today I pray. I'm going to pray for you. I'm gonna, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. And thank God for being God. That he can trust me. That I don't have to be seen. But I'm still faithful to the position he put me in. And I will be faithful to it till he gave me another position. Because that way it was. But I stole my ministry. I'm sure that I felt this in my heart. There's a ministry I wouldn't serve. This ministry was praying for like seven men. He prayed for this. I took seven men. They have no members in the church, really. I took seven men there. And we blessed. We bought tithe money in like crazy. We bought. We did it. We did it. And I served. I served. And other people say, oh, man, what are you serving them like that? Some of the guys, they start burning off, you know, because that period of time, people trail you, but when they don't see nothing for them coming to pass, they want to burn off. I said, I can't go until God tell me. See, I learned. When God tells you to do something, you don't quit because you want to. You quit when God tells you to quit. So I guess when God told me my time to go, I left. But I served. I served. I served. I served the ministry. I said what God told me to do. Because I was doing it because God told me to do it. I wasn't doing it because of what I want to do. I did it because that's what God wanted me to do. And that's what the relationship me and God got. Well, I love this word today about that. You know, we don't glorify in ourselves. We glorify in the Lord. Because it is His will we do. It is His will we pray for His people. People bring gifts. We bless it. We, we, we pray for their sin. We speak in their life. Because if God chosen you, you don't glorify. You give God the glory. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. We praise you.
We give you glory. We give you honor today. For Wednesday night Bible study, God, we thank you for Veterans Day. You the great. We pray for all the veterans out there. We thank that for them. We pray for the president. We pray for our country come together, loving one another, God. God, we pray now in the name of Jesus, we be connected to you because you already got everything fixed. You already know everything's going to happen. You already you know everything good is going to come in our life. You know every tragedy is going to come in the future. You already know it, God. We give you praise and honor today. Say, God, as long as you with us, we able to do it. A seed of abundant more than we can even ask and think of when the power works in us. Glory be to God. Thank you today for tuning in. God already knows everything is going to happen before it happens. Why not stay connected to him and love him and let him grow you and make you stronger than you ever thought you'll ever be. Look, let's get ready for Sunday. We're going to have an awesome time Sunday. Awesome, awesome word. I love you. I thank God for you turning in, tuning in. My name is Pastor Glenn Winston at 310 Salem, Conway, Arkansas. God bless you.